Hi, my name's Phil, I like to talk about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss how the government have decided to completely stuff the largely pro-conservative farming industry for a second time this week. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the idea that farmers largely voted for Brexit, they didn't all, but largely voted for Brexit, was a bit of a head scratcher to those of us who understood what Brexit was likely to mean. After all, the farming industry relies on a number of things. First of all, it relies upon frictionless trade with the EU in order to be competitive. Second, it relies upon a lot of migrant labour. And Brexit was run very much as an anti-immigration campaign. Sure, they didn't necessarily know that the immigration plans announced this week were going to emerge from it, but it was very, very likely. And third, it relies upon fairly hefty EU subsidies. So we've already seen that Brexit is going to screw over the frictionless trade. That has been made abundantly clear some time ago. This week, they also announced, as I say, immigration plans, which if genuine, will see the farming workforce obliterated overnight. But they were at least going to have the subsidies matched by the UK government. Well, for a year at any rate, I'm really not quite sure how they thought they were going to manage after that. But there you are. Now, I'm sure you all remember the famous issue of the Farmers Weekly from December the 30th. What do you mean, no? Really? All right, then. Basically, it trumpeted a firm commitment from the Treasury that the total budget for the subsidies would be the same in 2020 as it was in 2019. Now, I mean, big deal. Uh, 2020, we're still in the transition period. It's when we've left the EU proper, that's when you want to start worrying. Basically, this article talked about the £3 billion of British taxpayers' money being made available to them once we'd left the common agricultural policy. DEFRA, which is the government department concerned with, amongst other things, farming, said that we'd be moving to a simpler fairer system. Now, we all know what a simpler system means for the Conservatives. It means not as much money. The news was welcomed by farming groups who really ought to have known better at this point. And I'll remind you that this was after the general election, so nothing that's been announced now changes, you know, was changed based on that. But fast forward to the latest Farmers Weekly, and this is the real story that farmers should have been concerning with themselves with from the start. So the promise of British funded subsidies was only ever going to be short term. DEFRA are now confirming this. They're saying that the payments are going to be cut from anywhere between 5% and 25% next year for English farmers. It's not random. It goes up in brackets. So for those with the smallest subsidies, I think it's about 30,000 or something up to 30,000, it's going to be a 5% cut and up to 25% for the largest subsidies. And so it's going up in brackets, which means that the ones who get the greatest subsidies now will not only be facing the greatest cuts, but the greatest proportional cuts. And it's going to be phased through a number of years as well. So next year, it's between 5 and 25% cut. Increasing to 100% to 100% cut on all payments by 2027, in which case they will not exist at all, ever assuming there are any farms left by then. The government also seemed to be encouraging farmers to take a lump sum as opposed to the phase reduction in payments. It's like, well, you can have this phase reduction in payments or you can have what's in the box. What's in the box? They even suggest to farmers, and I'm not kidding about this, that they may want to take the lump sum to hasten their retirement. That's the advice. Say. So, this is what happens, farmers, when you don't form yourselves into a powerful lobby group like your American counterparts. The farming lobby in the US is so powerful that Donald Trump has to keep bribing them with vast sums of public money whenever he massively mishandles their competitiveness, which is pretty constantly. Trump wouldn't dare piss off the farmers. Farmers in this country... Not that important to government, it seems. A little bit careless. Assuming that the Conservatives will always have your back just because you always vote for them. The only thing this government do with backs is stick knives in them. Now, 
Sure, I am guessing there are plenty of farms with healthy profit margins who can absorb the damage this will do to their business model. It just means they're going to get less money. Boo hoo. Of course, there's still the issue of actually getting the labour and, you know, being able to get their produce to market without this frictionless trade, um, you know, due to the other effects of Brexit. But if they can weather that storm, then they may plod on. But farms on a tighter profit margin will be taken out immediately when the first phase of this is implemented. As I say, if they're not already taken out by the fact that they can't get migrant labour, of course they can't replace that with British labour, and if they can't actually trade with anyone. Uh, presumably, this is the idea behind the lump sum. Saves the government money, of course, and many farmers may be forced to take it because they know that otherwise they're wiped out and hope that they can find another source of income before the money runs out. And who on earth can possibly say that they didn't see this coming for the farming industry? Really? I mean, it really is still a head scratcher that this industry, of all industries, largely voted Brexit. But anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.